Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Keith here on the bench tonight with the new Axial SCX24 Bronco. Uh, a couple weeks ago we did an unboxing video on these guys. Today we are going to start with the basic modifications to get these guys running a little bit better. We've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of comments out on the old uh, interwebs there. People saying they flip over, they're top heavy, they're tumbly and stuff. So as you know that sounds like a challenge that we're up against. And uh, we obviously have a lot of experience dealing with it, dealing with a lot of the hard body builds that we choose to do. So uh, we'll show you guys how to make this guy, being a hard body and not so tippy, get around a little bit better, make you guys a little bit happier with it overall. Now this is the uh, red color. Uh, we have it in uh, the silver. Actually, I'll show you guys that one when we're done. I don't want to spoil the uh, build off on this right now. So. Um, we have the silver one, as you see in the unboxing video, if you check that one out, but this red is like really metallic, like, wow, that's fire. You see that, you're just, mm -hmm. that is an intense red. I'm really, really liking that. Uh, beautiful paint job, no fish eyes, um, looks great, no scratches, decals are laid up nice. The matte black between the red is a good line, very happy, you can pull it out of the box. Um, so anyway, a lot of complaints these guys are getting is this gap between here and here in the front end and uh, the spacing back and forth uh, or this big gap right here on the side so we're, <clears throat> so we're gonna show you a couple mods that we can do to bring this back in and make that work better plus we're gonna ditch the velcro mount as the velcro starts to as you can see it bites really well and then it starts to get hairy like this so then a couple more of these and then now your body is no longer, see, it's no longer sitting nice. So you got the, you're going down the trail and you're, you're clapping away. So we're going to get rid of that. We're going to go to magnet mount and we're going to show you how to get this body sitting all the way down. This mount actually can, can come down one more hole. We'll take care of that really quickly. First up, we're going to take the body off so we don't uh, damage anything. You don't want to pull out the wire right in the front here. So yeah, you just want to unplug your wires here, pull this little guy out here, fish him under the battery tray, and then you can just pull off two screws on the back, just like you take off a bumper on a regular SCX24. <coughs> okay, easy enough, simple enough. Take the body off, two screws on the back, pull out your motor wire right here. Remember the direction. There is a little tang on here, so you can't mess up putting that in. Just be careful putting it in. You don't damage the wires. Uh, we can get rid of this Velcro right here completely. Toss him, same thing on the body. Now, the other thing we need to do is actually lower this ESC down. And I just cut out this tab of foam on the back. You can actually unplug everything from there now. So we want to take this guy off. Um, As you can see, it's you know it's a fairly thick piece. It's a little bit thinner than this, but it's still three millimeters lower we can go down. But that's not so much the important part. The important part is this little front tab right there. Can you see that, Jess? Yep. This guy needs to be cut off like this right here, level with the other side, because what that does is actually holds these wires up, which is holding your ESC actually not fully sitting on this pad, and it's holding actually level with the top of this right now. After I take that out, this can actually sit down all the way. This guy can drop down all the way. So that's basically um, the easiest, quickest thing we can do to get the weight down in the front and get that front end closed up. So Okay, so take all your wires out of here before you go start cutting in there. Don't try to do this with everything attached because you'll cut a wire. That's never fun. Okay, so I get that all cleaned off. What I like to do is just take my knife and go in on this side here, and I just make a slice down. Now don't mash on the frame. You will bend this little frame. You gotta hold the truck nicely and slowly just work at it. Don't just get at it, because you'll, 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 you'll ruin it. <laughs> and then here, we'll take this guy off the bottom. And then we'll use a simple uh, Shugu or uh, I believe E6000, whatever you guys are going to use, contact cement, you can even use CA glue, who cares. Um, 
we jam a knife in between there, break that uh, bond very simply, very easily. Okay, so uh, now that we have that sitting low enough that we can actually get all our ports into there without having that tang blocking everything, um, we actually aren't going to remount this into the chassis yet until we get the body back on after we're done moving the bumper and moving that down. As uh, you can see inside here, uh, they cut away the dashboard and kind of pushed it back a little bit, never mind cutting it away. So this guy has some room to uh, tuck in there, just like that there. So what I like to do is get everything all back together. I'll put a little bit of our Shugu or E6000, whatever you guys want to call it. Get this guy lined up exactly where he's going to fit, and then I can open the body up and kind of do that. It's easy, work underneath, right? So, anyhow, let's get this body mount dropped down to its lowest position, and then we'll take off the front bumper. I'll show you a quick mod how we can simply cut out the corner to get more steering uh, for the tire to kind of pass through it once it's already brought back in. So, these are all um, uh, so far zero, everything's going to be zero dollars pretty much, except for changing the shock springs uh, that's gonna be the only mod we're gonna do today that's actually gonna cost you a buck or two um, if you have any other SCX 24s and you upgraded the shocks on them you already have a set so okay so simple enough I'm uh, no drilling no holes or nothing I'm just putting these two screws right back into where they came from uh, she goes in there nicely okay so that is all the way down and now you can see that our ESC combo without that glue pad in there and everything is look at that it's money it's like half a millimeter just below that and which is perfect because it's not going to hold the body up at all and that's what we're after so uh, that works out perfectly our tangs in the front are wide open now so we can plug into that super quick easy free mod you guys everything we're going to do in this video you can do at home for free to make your truck that much better and uh, not be upset with it flipping over out of the box so let's get cracking okay uh, next up uh, front bumper I'm gonna take it off to begin with because we're gonna cut the corners out of it for once we push it back in. Uh, the tires will need a little bit more room for clearance. One quick warning I wanna give you guys about the new Axial Bronco is the ball ends on the end of the shocks here and the ones on the end of the steering knuckles in here and such. They went from a fine thread to a coarse thread um, and you need to watch that when you're doing a brass knuckle because if you don't change the balls you will not be able to thread your ball end into that brass knuckle if you try you'll snap it off see it happens um, I actually I, we weren't even paying attention it's such a small tool of watching a show put it on there I put it in I gave it just the slightest turn broke off the tip in there so uh, this housing is now garbage so just be careful you guys watch out for that we found it the hard way but we'll luckily share that information with you right here um, bumpers off. Okay, so simple enough, you could see, I don't know if you'd be able to see, can you see there, Joe's? The inside edge of this bumper, right there. So the inside of this edge of this bumper right here, we're gonna cut out this little back piece of webbing, and that's gonna let our tire just give it that little bit more clearance as it's coming through. We're not gonna cut back any of the face of the bumper, any of the top of the bumper, and uh, that should give us a ton more room. It's just a simple free mod, guys. Cut out the corner like that. I am going to take out just a little bit more down here to get this guy flushed out, but I can just use a piece of sandpaper to knock that guy down. So simple enough. Now when that guy is all back on there, and the truck's sitting low because we're going to lower it down, and there's actually bumpers coming in, you can see now where it gives us that much more clearance right through there, right? So um, it's still going to rub and tuck a little bit when we pull it in, but that's just life. So I'm going to cut that. We'll throw that back on. We'll give that a couple of test cranks. And uh, then we're gonna move on to the shocks. Okay, and uh, to move the bumper back in, there's actually two spots to move it back in. We're just gonna go in one hole on the bumper, push that guy in a little bit. Two holes is too much, won't work. Okay, there we go. Bumper tucked in, body pose dropped down, you guys. Uh, you can see now here, we're clearing that bumper. Look at that. Like, we're just clearing that bumper. It's gonna rub just a little bit, but whatever, that's scale, right? Like, uh, you don't go out wheeling with a vehicle can drive on the road, that's not rub. And I got a Cherokee on 35s, let me tell you, that thing is eating itself the whole time it's on the trail, so. And she's big enough for it, she's got a big lift and such, but 35s are big. You get any type of fenders, it's gonna get them. <laughs> and I have a tuck of junk in here, make that look pretty again. But anywho, look at that. 
Look at that. She's tucked to the side. It looks good. That gap right there is nice and reasonable. I would say it's it's tucked underneath from the front. No gap in the front. And she's sitting down beautifully right there. Look at that. Money. That's money, do. <laughs> Where's the magnets? Cool. So for the magnet mounts, we have two neodymium earth magnets and two washers. Simple enough. Very simple enough. We'll show you how to do this um, the best way possible. Let's get this rear body screwed in place so we don't have anything fall out of it. I like to get all my body mounted uh, back up before we go back in and put that ESC in. I can wait. Okay, so we threw the body back on, two screws in the front. You can see she lines up there, slides around, looks good. Anyhow, where's my magnets? Here's my magnets. Um, we're gonna use our trusty shoe goo. Get some nice, fresh, clear stuff going on. Um, yes. So yeah, like Jesse just uh, mentioned, make sure they're the right way. Uh, magnets have one side that's stronger than the other. Like this side's not that great. So all we, all you gotta do is really just put the magnet there, get close, and the side that wants a bite's gonna track and snap onto it. So um, yeah, so put these guys in. Um, you don't want to go right to the very edge because of the hood's got the shape to it so we like to keep it kind of about the three quarters of the way in okay so we're gonna leave it like that for about 15 minutes till those guys set up and then we can come back and do the top i'll show you guys how to get those set into the nice uh, position and then uh we'll cover that with a bit of material so they actually just doesn't glue together and screw us over uh we'll see you guys back here in a few seconds we're gonna just put this off side let it dry and uh Okay, so uh, sorry guys, we jumped the gun on here. I forgot to uh, film this last little bit, so we'll just give you an update. Uh, what we did was we let these magnets on the front get nice and tacky, pretty much dry, and then we just taped over the masking tape around the mount so they can actually move and shift. And then we stuck our uh, washers on top. Um, make sure your washers are steel and they do stick. Um, lots of washers this size are usually stainless steel. So make sure they are a metal washer and they will bite that. And we just put some shoe glue behind them, let it sit on top of the tape. The tape acts as a buffer so it can't um, actually glue the two together. If it does, we'll just cut the tape off and peel it off there separately. Uh, last thing we're gonna do is we are gonna go back to the OG um, SCX24, like your deadbolt or your JLU. Uh, the very soft springs. Um, the new ones that they have put with the truck are far too springy. Yes, I understand it is for the heavier weight body, but it doesn't allow the truck to articulate and flex as nice as it should. And plus holding the weight higher is raising the center of gravity, which makes your truck more tippy. So we're gonna drop those down onto stock shocks. Very simple, very quick. So I'll take the tire off. Lots of room, get in there. Grab that guy, give him a twist there, drop him down, pop him off, done. Grab your new shock. Now if you look on, one side is smaller, one side's a bigger hole. The bigger hole obviously receives the ball. Nice softer spring. Now we're gonna rinse and repeat that all the way around. And then once we're done guys, um, I don't know, a lot of people don't know that, um, actually I'll show you on a spring that's free. Um, hold that. So um, this spring is uh, really springy. It's obviously heavy tension, but uh, this guy now he's with the softer spring, the truck's gonna sit lower and sag a little bit more in the rear than the front with all the extra body weight. But the little collar on the top of the springs is actually adjustable, if you can see that there. So you can actually set your ride height. Now a lot of people get this mixed up with um, 
like a spring rate adjustment. This is not a spring rate adjustment. Uh, the spring rate does not change on how much you compress it down. It's just the spring rate is always the same until it bottoms out. Um, this is just your ride height adjustment. So what we're going to do is just on the back of this truck, we're going to drop our ride height adjustments all the way to the bottom and then just put a dab of glue to hold them in place because I know from already building another one, that's how she's going to want to sit. So um, if you guys did not know, you, that's how you adjust it. Now you don't have to glue that. You can take a twist tie and put a twist tie in there, a piece of wire, be creative, zip tie or whatever, just to hold it from moving. And if you actually look around and have a 3D printer, you can 3D print the actual little shock clip to go onto the shocks. Uh, we printed some before and uh, we've used them in a couple builds, but um, we just find it easier to kind of find out what we want, put a dab of CA glue there and call it. These shocks are literally probably a dime a dozen. So yeah, we're gonna go through, change this all out. We'll adjust that. We'll show you guys a new ride height. Be back here in a few seconds. Okay guys, there you go. We got the uh, factory shocks back in it. Uh, we did the mod to the front end. We brought the body down in the front. Um, that gap is gone in the front bumper, which I noticed a lot of people were not happy with. Um, the gap is gone here, the gap is gone here. We cut the corners of the front bumper so we can still steer in there. Look at that, she's just clearing. And the truck is sitting already compressed down with these uh, heavier springs. Once we put our battery, in, or uh, sorry, lighter springs, once we put our battery in the back and put our ESC back in the front, she's gonna bounce out just perfectly. Now with the springs in the rear, they are the stock JLU ones. Uh, we took the uh, ride height adjuster collar right to about there at the bottom just before it starts to taper off. And I put a little dab of CA glue like we just said a couple seconds ago, you can use whatever you want, that's what we did. And we know that's the ride height we want her to be riding at. Uh, for this guy with those light shocks. Um, unfortunately, these guys are just a little too bouncy. They're not gonna give you a good uh, experience with the truck, so just get rid of those. Go get a set of stock ones. Um, even if you go buy a set of like hot racing, regular ones, they come with three different springs in them. And uh, we found out those springs, it's either too light or the other ones are just far too heavy or still too heavy. Just the factory axial ones are just perfect. I think they're like eight bucks for a pack of four. They're dirt cheap. Um, yeah, we have our other one set up here. Uh, basically both the same mods done to it. This is mine, this is Jesse's. Um, the difference in mine, you can obviously see I removed the spare tire and the post. We're gonna take care of that in another video when we get into uh, doing some brass upgrades and such. And I've already went through and added brass knuckles and steel rims and different tires and stuff. But anyway, we'll get to that in a later video. Uh, we wanted to keep this one simple to all the free mods that you could do to it to uh, make it look better, sit better, ride better, have more fun. Uh, it's the name of the game at the end of the day, guys. Uh, so yeah, if you got one of these, you're gonna enjoy it. They're beautiful little machines. Um, have fun. We'll see you guys on the next one. Cheers.